different way, different than what is used to. Not the correct because these people were not Arab, were not native. So it, it, their accent entered in the thing, in their citation. So he felt the danger of these of the Quran being the, being altered through by the people who are these reciters who were not native uh, speakers of Arabic. So he went back to those man to the Khalifa and he related to him this story and he said, I'm afraid that would be told the Quran would be lost and be altered by this group. So Uthman, at that time, he asked for the original uh, compilation that has the, the daughter of Omar, the second to be had. He asked for it, and he brought it, and he asked four scribes to copy this Quran, the original book they have, copy from it as much as they can, and he started sending the copies to these countries saying to them that they have to abide by this uh, original uh, book, original manuscript. And he collected all the other books about the Quran that have been written by uh, the companions, because each companion, he used to, as we said, he used to write on his own uh, the Quran with his review. He collected all that, and by the consensus of the companions, after consulting the companions, he burdened all these all these copies and only the one the copies that he have made or he has copied from the original manuscript was the one that preserved. So these were the three stages of collecting the Quran. Uh, I guess that's it all about the Quran and the revelation and the, the collection of the Quran the story. Uh, if there is a time, maybe we will talk about uh, some miracles of the Quran which are the challenges that the Qur'an brings. In the Qur'an, when you read the Qur'an itself, you will see a very uh, strange phenomenon, which is no book, you cannot find any book, which is what we call it, ask those who know, who have knowledge. Ask those who have knowledge. In the Qur'an, you may read something, and then and in the verse, you'll find the Qur'an saying, if you do not believe, if you have doubt, then go ask those who have knowledge. And then what happened? In one verse here, we have God says, All mankind, if you are in doubt about resurrection, <coughs> of your resurrection, then verily we have created you from Adam and from dust. First, we have created you from dust, referring to Adam. Then from a lutfa, a mixed drop of a male and female this, uh, sexual discharge, offspring of Adam. Then from a cloth, then from a little lump of flesh, so, some form and some unformed that we may make you make, make it clear to you and show you our ability and our power. So that's what happened when the Muslim took these, this verse and we went, they went to a doctor, very uh, no well-known doctor called Keith Moore. Where in this, he's a contemporary uh, in embryology. And they bring this verse to him and he said, can you examine this book, this one for us? So after the examination, he was astonished by how precise was the Quran in the description of the development of the embryo inside the womb of the mother. Since first it comes as a drop until it becomes an infant. And he, even in his book that he had authored, he had changed some of the scientific facts he had wrote. And he, when he was asked, what do you feel about this? The verse, he says, it must have been revealed only by a divine one. It must have been come from a divine source. No one could ever describe the embryo this accurately except the one who created, the other created. So this is one of the things that you can you will find in the Quran, that this challenge. The second one, the second challenge is that the Quran, you, you will find the Quran talking about something or giving you an incident, and then he says, you didn't know this before. Imagine you are reading a book, and no author actually offering a book. He would say in his book to his readers, "You never knew this. This is brand new information for you." The Quran says that. The Quran says in one of the verses, "It was said, relating the story of Noah, O oh Noah, come down from the ship with peace from us and blessing on you and on the people who, were, who are with you." 
and on some of their offspring, but there will be other people to whom we shall grant their, grant their pleasures for time, but in the end, a painful torment will reach them from us. And then God continues, this is of the news of the unseen, which we reveal unto you, O Muhammad, neither you nor your people knew them before this. So be patient, surely the good end is for the past. So they, they, in, at that time when, when it was revealed, the Quran, after relating the story, he says, you never know, you and your people, you never knew that. And you haven't, you haven't seen anyone at that time, or any story up at that time, revealing that, revealing that there was any opposition, anyone who came and says, no, I knew about that before. In the history of prophethood, no one came and says, no, I knew about this before you say it. Then we, what we call exposing the alternative, because many people will say, the Quran has been ruled by Muhammad, the Quran has been ruled, been ruled maybe by Satan, the Quran has been, been ruled by another man, or whatever. So the Quran comes to refute all that. The Quran, for example, says, no evil ones have brought it, have brought this revelation down. It would neither be fitting for them, nor would they be able, indeed, to have, uh, indeed, they have been removed from here. So the Quran is refuting the argument that it is it coming from the demons, from the evil ones. <coughs> if they are, I mean, if it's coming from them. So the Quran is refuting that. The Quran is also refuting it's coming from Satan. People who say it's Satan who have revealed it. So the Quran says, so when you recite the Quran, seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the rejected. If it's Satan, the one who recite it, he will not ask the readers of the Quran to ask refuge from him before reading. That's also in the Quran. In the Quran, it's refuting also that Muhammad have written the Quran. So it says, neither did you, O Muhammad, read any book before it, nor did you write any book whatsoever with your right hand. In that case, indeed, the followers of falsehood might have doubted. Muhammad before that, or Muhammad actually, he is uh, unlettered prophet. He is beginning to know how to read, he didn't know how to write. And the Quran came to prove that, he came to emphasize that. It says that you never have read something before, you never have wrote anything with your right hand before, otherwise the people might have doubt in the Quran that you bring. Throw to them. Finally, the Quran open, give an open challenge to all. He says, do they not consider the Quran? That's for us. Had it been from other than Allah, then they would surely have found therein much discourse. The Quran now is challenging us to read it and find an error. The slightest error you can find. Try to do it. But since it was revealed 1,400 years ago until now, we cannot find anyone that came up with an error in the world. Those who are following Muslim and those who are not following the world. So by that I will uh, finish and I will be very happy, inshallah, if you have any questions regarding the topic. Uh, otherwise I will have to continue. I still have more. <laughs> So thank you very much. I hope I was uh, not so long in the, uh, in the I mean in the explanation, and uh, I hope you 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 got something from uh, you got education from the, the literature. Show. Yeah, you have copies of the Quran as I said. Please take one of them, and uh, the challenge is open. Please find it here. So do you have any questions? Yes. Is there any method by all all by the Muslim can memorize all the contacts in the forum? Magic? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually it's a good question. Magic is not is prohibited by any by the way. So it's prohibited to practice magic, by the way. But uh, the thing starts from, first of all, there's a promise from God in the Quran that He has made the, makes it easy for those who want, for those who wish, to memorize 
we have made it easy for them to be more accurate. This is number one. Number two, it starts actually, it just, first of all, it needs uh, uh, devotion. It needs that you have time. And it needs that you open your mind and heart to the book. And as you can see, many Muslims have memorized the book. There's no uh, specific reason how they come to do that, but easy as the only the only explanation that I can come with is that the promise from God that He has made it easy for it to be to be preserved by memorization and by reading. And that's one of the things that we can call um, one of the challenges of the Quran that any other book, any other book, if we bring all copies of the Quran and we threw it or we burn it. There's no Quran on the earth. We still Muslim can reproduce the Quran because we memorize it. We know it word by word, letter by letter, even a false story. But that that is not to say the case for any other book, whether it's a religious book or even mad mad man man author. So that's what we call it. One of the challenges, <laughs> as you just said. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Please, please ask me. Yes. Um, uh, you say Quran is the, is the guidance of the mankind? Guidance uh, for mankind. Yeah. In your country, Egypt, um, isn't it the modern law system is more come from the Quran? No. Most of it comes from the Quran. Most of it comes from the Quran. The, but the, the other side of that that's not coming from the Quran, it's coming from secular law. And that's due to that our countries, as as also many countries, even here in, the, in Hong Kong, we were victims of colonization. So that's affected the tradition of our country. So the uh, we call it those who came and, and, and stayed in our countries who are foreigners. Okay, they have implemented their laws. They have imposed their laws upon us. But still, you can find the Quran and the, the laws of the Quran in the uh, in, in our modern world. But still, yeah. yes, uh, Quran is the guidance of human beings. But my question is that Quran revealed for only Muslim or uh, non-Muslim too. As I said, it is it is in the Quran, in the first chapter, the first verse or the second verse that we were really saying, talking about, it comes the promise from God to all son of Adam. All son of Adam means all mankind. All son of Adam means all mankind. And God promised to guide them, whether through the books before the Quran or with the Quran, which is the last one. So Quran as a guidance from God comes for all, it's not only for Arab, it's not only for Muslims from Southeast Asia, it is for all mankind. People who don't believe, even in Islam, they can take the book and read it. The book itself, the Quran itself exists with uh, leaders of the world. Like it, it is reserved in the library of the Congress, by the way. One of the one of the most ancient copies of the Quran is reserved there. And it was, it was with Abraham Lincoln, as I remember. So it doesn't mean that it's only revealed, revealed for the Muslims, it's not only for the Arab, it's for all mankind. That's talking to all, whether you believe, accept or not accept, you can read it. I have a question. Are there any, are there any uh, rituals that you must do, or any, uh, any uh, precautions you must take when you're handling uh, copy of the Quran? Precautions uh, regarding not not to maybe uh, damage the book. Uh, yes, there are precautions, but this we call it uh, disciplines of the Quran. I mean, disciplines of handling the Quran. Like for example, you have to be clean. That's the word of God. You have to be clean means you have to wash for you. And have not. You have to be clean. Uh, wash your hand while you're clean, or for book, or, or at least you have to have a pollution like when you use it. But that's not a must. That is one of the things that being being disciplined, being respectful to the word to the book of God. But if you carry the Quran, I mean without that still it's okay. 
still it's okay. But we do not do rituals before. Uh, I mean, it's not an obligatory thing, it's not a must thing. It just comes out of you that you respect God, you respect the book of God that's coming from God. I give you an example. For example, are you, are you married? Yeah, for example. So, normally, before you marry, I mean, you are in love. And then there will be some kind of uh, letters coming and going, correspondence. And uh, I see some people, they will take the litter and kiss it. And put it, not on the floor, and put it in his drawer or in, under his coat. Or, I mean, he keep it in a safe place. And might also, before, uh, before taking it, maybe, maybe he will put some perfume or so. I mean, carry. So that's out of love to the person who have wrote this book, or had this, wrote this letter for you. So the same thing, out of love for God, out of respect for the Word of God, I have to be also, I have to be as, as well treated as respectfully as I can. But it's not a bit of it. It's only in the case of ladies, uh, when in, in their menstrual uh, period, they are not uh, uh, encouraged to touch it. But they can still read it using, I mean, for example, they can wear uh, uh, one piece or I mean gloves or so, or can just use a stick to uh, to uh, to remove the the, pa the papers and so on. Only that's the case. What about a digital copy? Digital copy is it's, it's not a problem with that. I mean, if you have your uh, digital copy here, yeah, no problem. Apple have given us a lot of options. So yeah, you can read anytime, no problem with that. It's only touching the book itself uh, for men. When they are uh, after 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 meeting with, with their wives, or for ladies when they have their menstrual, uh, so it's not only for women, it's for ladies for, for men as well. But that's only the case you are not allowed to touch. Them. Other than that, you can touch. Them. That's hopefully that is uh, answered. Uh, any more questions from the back? This is a chance to ask uh, all the questions you were asking us last week about please, the Quran. Please, please. <laughs> please. I know maybe I, I, I make it very long, the demonstration, that's why you forget your questions. <laughs> <laughs> in, in Quran, where is the addressing of the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where? Which and where? And which surahs? And what is the, uh, uh, the full uh, yeah, surahs? We were saying... Can you explain? Yeah. Well, uh, the brother is asking a very interesting question. Actually, it's not, uh, I mean, the question he's asking is not silly. Uh, it's valid for Muslims as well as non Muslims. Because many Muslims, they don't know. They don't know the answer to this question he's asking. I'm sure he has some hint himself, but uh, to make it clear, you cannot read the Quran full page without seeing where the name of God is mentioned. When you open the Quran, it's unlikely you will read a full page without seeing the name of God mentioned. So two-thirds two -third of the Quran is reserved describing what God wants from us, I mean telling us about God. It's not telling us how to sleep or what to eat. It's telling us the relationship that we should have between ourselves and Almighty God. So, uh, the brother is mentioning, asking specifically where. So, it's throughout the Quran. The name of Allah is mentioned in the Quran more than any other name. And then, if you want to see places where the name of God is mentioned in the Quran, last week, if you were here in the presentation, and uh, you will see that uh, the brother gave two places in the Quran where you will see a bunch or the best part where the name of God is mentioned. One of them is uh, chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 255. It's called Verses of the Troll, a site of proceeding for the Muslims who wrote that. And this is given. Uh, descriptions of attributes of Allah, giving uh, information about Almighty God. In that, he's saying that God doesn't feel tired, he does not feel sleepy, he knows 
everything that is happening happen according to his knowledge or his power. Another part where it's mentioned is chapter 112, the brother mentioned. This whole chapter is very short. It's, uh, I think, four verses only. It's giving information about who God is. And the brother mentioned the context in which this verse, I mean, this chapter was revealed to the prophet Muhammad. And uh, reading that only four verses, if you open that book, you chapter 112, you may not understand it at first, unless you know the circumstances of the revelation. What at which context this uh, chapter was revealed, and uh, many other places. When Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned, if this Quran was revealed onto a mountain, the mountain will will melt down out of fear and respect of Almighty God. It says, "La wamza ma haza Quran ala Jabali." And then all those following verses also describing this chapter 59 of the Quran, if you want to see the reference toward the end of the chapter. And uh, this giving also a description of Almighty God. So the Quran, the topic of it is explaining to mankind, the children of Adam, the relationship we should have between ourselves and Almighty God but also give other information how we can live between ourselves, relation between man and man. And also giving information between man and the environment, how we should live with the other creation of Almighty God, like the, the trees. We should not just go because we have a, what is called this thing you use to cut the trees and go and cut all the forests. You cannot do that as a Muslim. So the Quran it's indeed a mercy for the whole world. I think uh, I've been very long, but I wanted to specifically uh, come to that. Actually, I'm not fully satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the purpose here is actually not to satisfy you. Uh, the purpose is just to give you the little information we have. I, I want no more information about it. So how about you read the Quran and uh, you will find out more. It's very, it's very good actually, but uh, when you just, the brother was saying that whenever you walk on a page, any page in the Quran, you find the name of Allah either, the least, you'll find the feet at least once in one, in one page. Which is revealing you, was telling you that it is God, the author of this book. If I'm the author of that book, I will write my name, I will write my story, I will write about my wife and my, 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 my children and the things that happened to myself. You will find all the book writing talking about myself. Yeah. For example, if I am if the author of the book. But who's, on this book, when you always read the, when you read the book, it's talking about, it's not talking about, it's not talking about any of the prophets. It's not talking about anyone more blessed than anyone only talking about God. Who is God? What are the names of God? What God wants from you and what God want, want, wants you to not to do? So it is all God, 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 God. It's, all, it's coming from God. It's a third, something we call authorship. While in other books, like for example in, in, in the Bible, you find the book, first book written by Mark, by Luke, by Peter, by the Quran is by whom? Open the book, try to find this this wording. Why all reserved, all copyright are reserved to to the author? Who's the author? The author is not on the on the two sides. The author is inside. The author is inside. So that is also a clear uh, explanation for maybe for the brother that God exists everywhere in the book because this is his book. Because this is. How is it still relevant today in today's society? Well, that's a very good question, actually. But uh, referring to, for example, uh, miracles or things that, uh, let's say, there are two parts actually of this of, of the answer. The first one is uh, talking about uh, societies and how and the relation between people and people and, and so on. That is, we can find inside the Quran. 
There is another part which is for people who have knowledge like scientists and so on. Like you can find miracles, scientific miracles, inside the Quran, which is not our topic now. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about this because it should be in the next uh, lecture where the other brother we should talk, uh, inshallah, about the scientific miracles inside the Quran. Whether it's in medicine or, or physiology or, or oceanology or zoology or whatever. So all that exists in the Quran. But the other side of directives or instruction from God for, to man how to live on this earth, you will find many that, um, not all of them, if not all of them, are all uh, instructing people how to deal in this life, in, in this time being, in this time being. Like, how to try, how to treat your uh, neighbor, how to treat your wife, how to treat your children, how to treat, uh, how, how in, in a battlefield, what there are ethics. There are ethics of battlefield in Islam that are sitting there. No, usually there is no ethics. Ethics in, 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 in battle. Yeah, I wanna I wanna win so I will kill all the people in front of me. That's the that's the that's the modern war. Like what we see. But in Islam, no, you are if you are in a war, in war, in a battlefield, you are not allowed, as the brother was saying, first of all, to cut a tree. You are not allowed to cut a tree. You are not allowed to kill an old man. You are not allowed to kill a woman. You are not allowed to kill a child. You are not allowed to kill any young man that is not armed. That's not carrying an arm or a weapon against you. Only you fight those who fight you. Those who carry or those who want to harm you. So, that is one of the things. In the Quran, it, it shows you how to treat the prisoners. To feed them from the food you are eating. Imagine it's your prisoners. If you get the charter of the United Nations, you will not find that. You will not find that the, in, in the prisoners should be treated this, this, uh, in this way. But in Islam, we are shown how to treat prisoners. We feed them from the same food we eat. In Islam, or in the book, in the Quran, we are, we are shown how to treat our maids, people who are serving us. We should smile perfect. We should eat, they, eat with, they should eat with us. Same food, dress the same from the same kind of dress we are dressing, we are, we are wearing. We should treat them as equal. There's no slavery. Most of the people say Muslim are one of the things that there is slavery in Islam. Actually, Islam came to liberate people. After Islam, or after the Quran was revealed, at that before Islam or before the Quran was revealed, there were many many uh, uh, slaves. Slavery was very common then. After Islam came, and gradually, of course, he started to liberate these prisoners. If someone made an oath, it's a very easy way to settle If someone made an oath, and he did not fulfill this oath, he had to free one of his slaves. Okay. Islam also, or God, is not, he's dealing with people, so he doesn't give a direct order that might make the people reject. Okay. So he goes gradually then. So he says, okay, we will free the slaves, the slaves, but in a smart way. If you made an oath and you didn't fulfill it, you have to free them. For example, if you, some, if by, by accident, you kill someone, like for example, by car, accident car or something, if you have a, a slave, you have to free a slave, just, that is, that is the, that's what, yeah, that's the, what do I do? Compensation. Expiration, yeah. So this way, Islam, for example, solved the problem of slavery. Until now, until now, in, in USA, we still have slavery. It's not sure. It's not on the surface. It's not on the surface, but you can see it's hidden. There are slavery. There. So Islam came to eliminate that gradually, and already it's happened. If a man, it, it happens that uh, one of the, the saying of the prophet, uh, he encourages people to free their male or their uh, uh, female slaves and marry them. Instead of having her for his pleasure without I mean, a legal uh, contract. So he says, this, for this person who frees, his male or his female slave and marry her and give offspring for, for her, whatever he, uh, I mean, he gets rewarded for that. 
So this is one of some of the things that Islam did, and still Islam is still doing, or the Quran is still doing. As I said, many there are many in Turkey. I cannot remember all, but there are some of the examples. We Islam as well, by the way, we denounce terrorism. It's not justified by any means that you kill an innocent person, as I was just saying. Only in the battlefield, you are. You have the excuse to, to kill and to fight. If he's harming you, he's about to kill, so you have you are defending yourself. Muslims are not allowed, are not permitted to, to wage a war, to start. Usually, they have, I mean, they, are, they have to keep uh, in peace, at peace, until the other enemy starts. But they have to keep alert. They have to stay alert. But you start, to start it, no. You are not allowed to start it. You have, even if you want to, to, to fight, you should not fight at night. You should not wage a war at night. People are asleep at that time. This is the best way to, to win a war and to start to, to fight at night. But the Prophet, in all his battles, he never started a battle at night. He started in the morning. People are awake, fair and just even in the war. So these are the things of some of the examples. Also the text that uh, the Emperor that you have mentioned, it is in the Quran. People are going to Dr. King. Yeah. So that means in that time of the time of the Prophet, they still have not found out the actual truth of the priority. So the they have it. They have it explained. They have it explained. But some of them, in, in the process, they have some mistake or they have it's not accurate. But as mean, it's mentioned in the yeah, So that means Quran is admit ahead of time. Yeah, that, that's what we call it, the scientific miracles and scientific facts in the Quran and something predicting the future. That's what the brother coming inshallah this week will do. We'll, we'll explain that. Inshallah. Yeah, uh, just a reference. The brother was mentioning about uh, killing innocent people. If you open the Quran, it is uh, in chapter 5, verse 32. There is a very, very severe warning there. Page number. Chapter uh, 5, verse It's different, different from the one they have. So it's saying at the end of the verse, I mean, end of the uh, air. If you kill one single soul, it's like you have killed the whole of mankind. 532. Yeah. This is one of the greatest sins. Uh, that's the one I'm holding there. It's page 81. Yeah, a different one. I'm holding page the other one. Page 81. The other one, one is page 81. That means, that means Muslims are it not means whoever kills any innocent. innocent person is committing one of the gravest sins, killing all of mankind. And uh, it says in the same verse, if you give life or you help to maintain life, for one single soul is like you have helped to maintain life of all mankind. So this is the teaching we have in the book, not what you see in the media. This particular verse cannot find in any the whole testament. You can't find it in any other book. No, in the Bible, no, in any religious book. Only the Quran is telling you this one. And uh, it says also in the Surah Surah Nisa. No, this is the second part of it. It's talking about the Muslim himself. This is uh, telling Muslims whoever kills another Muslim knowingly. He will abide in the hellfire forever. So this is you have to teach. The anger of you have earned the anger of God. You will remain in punishment forever, and you will remain there forever without any power, without uh, any chance of getting out. So if you see what is being portrayed outside, Muslims are this and that. They are terrorists. Read the book. That's why we invite the people to understand what is in this book before making any judgment. That's actually the first thing we were talking about.